Germany. Huh. Dear Abe, your tanks are an inspiration and I'm a big fan of your YouTube channel. I'm wondering if I can get some advice from you. I'm having this problem for the past few months where some of my acros are RTN and STN. -y. Others are growing and coloring up fine. I can't figure it out. Here are my tank specs. Red Sea Reefer 450, 2 times Radeon G4, 8 fish, alkalinity 8.1, calcium 430, magnesium 1275, nitrate 10, phosphate 0.08, Skimmer Carbon Filter Sock. Any input is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Heinrich Leroy Heimer. Dear Heinrich, sorry to hear about your troubles. This is a common question that I get asked regularly, however it's a difficult one to answer. 9 out of 10 times reefers report good parameters with a pretty standard setup as you did. So my best response is a theoretical answer, especially since we don't have the luxury of a back and forth discussion. I often hear reefers saying that STN and RTN happens and is a normal part of reefing, especially with Acropora. People say that corals are going to die and there's nothing you can do about it. While I understand why people would say this, it is not my experience. I don't lose corals regularly and in the rare event that I do, I have a good idea of what caused it. In other words, my experience with tissue necrosis is that it happens after some kind of stress, which means that it doesn't happen randomly. I'm one who believes that with a proper setup and husbandry, STN and RTN will very rarely occur. So the good news is that I believe that this is a solvable mystery for you, and hopefully this letter will serve as some guidance in your investigation. There are two special circumstances when tissue necrosis occurs. One is if your tank is new. If your tank is less than 6 months old and you have tissue necrosis problems, it's probably because your tank is not established. Some people even have problems for up to a year, although the time varies on a lot of factors. The second special circumstance when tissue necrosis happens is for new arrivals. This is the most common cause of tissue necrosis for me and I could tell you that in my experience, pieces from maricultured or wild colonies have the worst chance of surviving if they were shipped to me. Aquacultured piece is also RTN but at a significantly less rate. Looking back to February 2017, 4 out of 10 maricultured pieces that I bought online eventually died within 3 months. Compare that to only about 2 out of 38 aquaculture pieces dying in that same time frame. So hopefully, I have communicated to you that the first step in preventing tissue necrosis is buying aquacultured corals. Not only are they more likely to survive, they are more likely to keep their color and grow well. But generally speaking, if any new arrival dies within 3 months of getting it, I don't really freak out about it. Especially if the frag was not even encrusting or growing. If they die, I just figure it got too stressed or shocked during the shipping process, or it wasn't a healthy piece to begin with. So the other causes of tissue necrosis fall into two broad categories. It is either swings or unfavorable conditions. As for swings, it could be any type of swing, such as a rapid change in alkalinity, which is the most common cause. Less commonly, salinity, temperature, calcium, pH, and magnesium swings may theoretically cause tissue necrosis as well, however, they would have to be probably very extreme swings. Even a lighting swing can cause RTN. This happens when reefers blast their new arrivals with too much light without acclimating the new frags to the new lighting. As for parameter swings, it's difficult to say how much of a swing is too much and it varies for each parameter. For example, a daily 2 degree Fahrenheit temperature swing is likely more tolerable than a daily 2 dKH alkalinity swing. And calcium instability, although not ideal, is more tolerable than alkalinity instability. Or a daily pH swing is more tolerable than a salinity swing. The bottom line here is that it's best to automate top off and dosing. Not only will this lessen the chance of subjecting your corals to swings, but stability itself improves coloration and growth. So if you're losing corals regularly, take a closer look at your system and husbandry to make sure everything is stable as possible. An important point is that if you're seeing tissue necrosis now, the inciting event or swing could have happened weeks or even months ago. 
Corals often have a delayed response to changes and one needs to take this into consideration or you may end up chasing your tail. This is why it's helpful to take good notes of what happens in your tank. Included in the swings category are changes. Both times that I had tissue necrosis events, it was because of a change. In 2017, it happened after switching salts. And more recently, I had some STN and browning out of some corals due to high nutrients. The details of these events don't really matter because it wasn't the new salt itself that caused the tissue necrosis. And it might not have been the actual nutrient level that caused the STN. The point here is that it was the actual change of salts and the too quick change in nutrient levels that caused these events. The take home point here is that if you're going to make changes, do it very slowly. Unfavorable conditions is the category that you should consider when you have ruled out a swing, it's not a new piece, and your tank is already established. This is probably where people have the most challenges in diagnosing their troubles, because a lot of times reefers don't even realize that something is not right. A recent example of this for me is discovering that my refractometer was off calibration. For at least 4 months I was running a specific gravity of 1.022 and didn't even know it. Another example is my Apex controller. Can you imagine if I reacted to this pH level? In fact, if I put faith into the pH and salinity readings that this $800 piece of equipment puts out, everything in this tank would probably be dead. The point here is that your corals may not be doing well because your test kits are steering you in the wrong direction. So if you can't figure out what's wrong with your corals, it's worth questioning the validity of your test results. Another subcategory of unfavorable conditions is parameters. Let me give you my theory on parameters, and again, this is purely my opinion. So generally speaking, in natural coral reefs, the parameters are as follows. Nowadays, you can find people running high levels outside of these ranges, especially with regard to nitrate and phosphate. Now this is a controversial topic in which there is no right or wrong answer. But if you want my opinion, I think it's safer to be within natural seawater ranges. And the further you are from these ranges, the more risky it is, especially if your tank is not well established or if you have a small tank. This is important to consider if you have no earthly idea of what's causing your tissue necrosis. I think most experienced reefers would agree that running your parameters at natural seawater levels will not kill your corals. But on the flip side, you have reefers like me who have had bad experiences running higher nutrients. The last category is everything else, which includes things like stray voltage or contaminants such as decaying magnets or copper wires. You should also consider contaminants in your source water due to an inadequate or neglected RODI system. Trusting your local fish store for your source water is something that I would never do. RODI systems are well worth the money, especially considering what we spend on other reefing equipment. It's really a no-brainer for me. As for how to treat STN, my experience with dips and products is almost like every other reefer. No product works reliably. Dips such as Coral RX, Melifix, Revive, Iodine, Antibiotics, etc. all have spotty efficacy. Even fragging a colony doesn't work all the time. I'm not saying that you shouldn't try any of these methods. All I'm saying is that the results are so hit and miss that it may not even be worth the money or effort. In my experience, Doing water changes and having excellent water quality is just as effective as all of the above in stopping STN. Another thing that I do when I'm having problems is that I simplify my system as much as possible. For example, if I'm dosing something that's not essential, like amino acids or iron or some snake oil, I'll stop it. Because the truth is that, as long as you're meeting their basic requirements and keeping everything stable, aquacultured acropora aren't that difficult to keep alive. They really just need strong light, good flow, and stable parameters in your natural seawater ranges to stay alive. The real challenge with them is getting them to grow and color up, which is part of what makes keeping them so rewarding. Again, this is not to emphasize that you're doing something wrong. Rather, I'm saying this because I truly believe that if you looked hard enough, you will figure out what's causing your tissue necrosis. Remember not to overreact. What caused the necrosis is already done and well underway. Think back weeks or even months ago for any changes that may have set this off. Scrutinize your testing equipment. Aim for near natural seawater parameters. Design your system so that everything is stable as possible. Simplify. Remove what you don't need. Do water changes using water from your own RODI system. Not only will these practices help stop the STN, they are good habits to have if you want to have long-term success. 
I sincerely hope this letter points you in the right direction. I know it's frustrating, but think of it as a stage that many reefers go through. You'll figure it out. And once you do, this learning experience will serve you well for as long as you keep Reef Aquaria. All the best, Abe.